In the 90s, we saw a number of new supercars, where everyone brought their own take to the game, and Ixam was definitely one of the most interesting ones. The French microcar maker tried to enter the game back in the early 90s with the Mega Truck, but later they would try again with the Monte Carlo. So, hello guys, and welcome back to another video, and here is the story of the Mega Monte Carlo. The story of Aixam dates back to 1975, when Arolla was founded. Arolla was a microcar maker, building tricycles and other small vehicles. These type of vehicles were quite popular back in the day, this thanks to the fact that they didn't require a driving license. And most of the time, these vehicles didn't even look like cars, but rather like home appliances. In 1983, a newly founded company called Aixam would acquire Arolla which would try to shake things around. The first Aixam would come in 1984. The 325D, as the car was called due to its 325cc diesel engine, looked like a micro version of many small cars all the time. The 325 was followed by a number of other versions and models with more powerful engines, but always with a small capacity in order to comply with the regulations. And thanks to their range, they found it a lot of success, something that allowed them to try other ventures. And this would come under the name of Mega in 1992. Mega, like the name suggests, was the complete opposite of what Ixam had been building until then. The goal of the company was to build the biggest and the fastest supercar. This for the sole reason to show that Ixam had the capacity to build world-class supercars. Mega's first supercar would be the truck which would be presented in 1993. The Mega Chuck was like nothing the world had seen before, a four-wheel drive V12 powered mid-engine supercar, with enough ground clearance to pass almost every obstacle. But if you want to know more about the Mega Chuck, you can watch the full story of it. A very interesting thing is that the truck was so ahead of its time. Before the Mega, the only supercars that could be considered off-road supercars were the Lancia Stratos and the Porsche 959, and maybe the Lancia 037. But both were built in order to comply with regulations, and both didn't have the ground clearance of the truck. Plus, the Mega truck had a V12. But it's funny to see how nowadays Lamborghini and Porsche are trying basically to do the same thing that Mega tried 30 years ago. But the truck wouldn't be the only supercar to come out of the French microcar maker, because in 1996 would also come the Monte Carlo. The Monte Carlo wasn't a pure mega project, but was started in effect by the Monte Carlo automobile. The MCA was founded by Fulvio Balabio back in 1983. Balabio was an Italian racing driver who had primarily raced on Formula 2, Formula 3000 and kart racing, but he also had some background on engineering, primarily on building racing bots. Fulvio built quite a great team around him. He was joined by Carlo Citti, an Italian engineer and engine designer who, prior to joining MCA, had worked for Ferrari and Alfa Romeo, primarily on their racing cars. Also, Guglielmo Bellassi joined the team. Bellassi was a Swiss racing driver and engineer who had a lot of experience on building chassis for different F1 teams and he also had experience on working on, with carbon fiber. The team would go to build the Centenaria in 
car was built to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Monte Carlo Automobile Club. The design of Centenaria wasn't the best in my opinion, the car looks more like a kit car rather than a true supercar. But underneath the hood, the car had some serious power, this thanks to having a Countach engine. But there were also versions with GT engines, one with a 7 liter V12 and another one with a GT by turbo flat 12. Anyways, this is the story for another time. Mega would go to buy MCA in 1994, but the interesting thing is that they bought only certain parts of the company, or almost nothing, since MCA had sold the 5 cars that they built to a Russian company in 1993, which together with the cars also got some of the assets and the rest of the spare parts, so Mega had basically to start the development of their new supercar from the ground up. The design was led by Sylvian Cossier, would also have designed the Mega Truck. This time Mega wanted to build something not as controversial as the track, but at the same time a supercar that could easily stand out from the crowd. The Monte Carlo design was quite ahead of its time in my opinion, considering that it was still 1995 and the blob design style was still going strong and thanks to the use of CAD software a lot of crazy designs were being revealed. The Monte Carlo actually looked great and quite ahead of its time. The first prototype had a steel chassis, but the cars that came later had carbon fiber ones, while the bodies were made out of carbon fiber on all the cars. The dimensions were in line with other supercars of the time, like the F50 and the Diablo, with a wheelbase of 2.6 meters, a length of 4.4 meters and a width of 1.9 meters. While well, the weight is hard to tell because it differs from review to review, but it would be something between 1350 kg and 1500 kg. For the engine they decided to go for the same engine that they used on the track, the M120. The 6 liter V12 Mercedes engine had proved to be a great and reliable engine, and Mega wasn't the only one to use the legendary V12 on their supercars, since uh, Isdera Cometadore had done this before and later Pagani with its Honda, even though they would go to mostly use the 7.3 liter version. On the Monte Carlo, the engine would produce 450 horsepower at its peak, even though, like with the weight, there are different numbers depending on the review of the car. This was 50 horsepower increase compared to the engine founded on the Mercedes. This was mostly achieved thanks to the ECU which Mega decided to use their own. For the gearbox they decided to use a 6 speed manual ZF gearbox, which made the car even more interesting since besides its Honda, the Monte Carlo is one of the only few cars to pair the M120 with a manual gearbox. Thanks to this, the Monte Carlo could hit a top speed of over 300 km per hour and could hit 100 in 4.4 seconds. Pretty strong numbers for the time. The interior had a typical cockpit driver focus design of the time, stuffed with leather and alcantara, and also with a lot of exposed carbon fiber. The car made its debut at the 1996 Geneva Motor Show, but for some reason the car went under the radar with not much coverage and talk about it. Later Mega would present a racing version of the Monte Carlo which featured a more aerodynamic body, but the car never raced. Frankly, the Mega Monte Carlo is one of the strangest supercars since so little is known about it and the production numbers vary. It's believed that the car was in production from 1996 to 1999 and at least two cars were built which were both used as show pieces, even though sources say that 5 cars might have been built, but a true number is unknown. So guys, thank you for watching and see you next time.